everyone, I'm Shaylin here with Reedsy. Today let's talk about specificity in writing. I once heard the phrase, specificity is authenticity, and it completely changed my view of how to approach writing, and I've never really stopped thinking of that line since. Specificity is kind of exactly what it sounds like, being more specific in the details that you choose. So say you have a character who likes sports, maybe a young character, and they aspire to be an athlete. But that's relatively vague and we could get a lot more specific with it, and the specificity can tell us a lot about the character. Maybe this character follows competitive fencing and has been learning the footwork and some of the techniques through YouTube tutorials and practicing with a paper towel roll. By getting more specific, we've learned so much more about the character, and the character inherently feels so much more developed than when all we knew was that they like sports. So here are eight ways to improve the specificity in your work. Number one, be on the lookout for abstract or vague words. Abstract language is rarely as strong as concrete language as a descriptor, so try to replace abstract words with concrete words. Concrete words are things that you can punch, they are real tangible objects, whereas abstract words are ideas. Emotions, ideas, concepts, philosophies, something like love, or anger, or peace, or religion. There's no concrete object or image associated with these things, so in order to be more specific rather than vague in your descriptions, be on the lookout for abstract words and abstract descriptions and replace them with concrete ones. Even when you use concrete words, try to be more specific. A tree could be an oak, a pair of shoes could be a pair of oxfords. The painting could be a watercolor. Number two, do research. You probably don't have inherent knowledge on everything that might appear in your writing, so research can be super useful. I often find myself googling types of flowers or types of chairs just to find the right detail in order to kind of fill out the space of my scene. And that leads to number three, choose your sounds well. When you're choosing your details, especially if you're doing research and kind of looking up different options for things that you could include in the scene to be more specific, pay attention to the sounds and the musicality. So I just searched up types of chairs and I really liked the term Cogswell chair. I hadn't heard of that before and it was a more interesting word to me than something like armchair, which I'm very familiar with. If it made sense in the setting, I might go with the Cogswell chair because I just really like the word and I think the word makes the sentence more interesting. You also want to choose words that fit the diction of the story. One I always remember was when I was looking up types of indoor plants for a scene, and one of the ones that came up was a dracaena, and I really liked how that word looked on the page, and I really liked how it sounded, and it kind of fit the lexicon of the story really well. So I chose that over something else, just because it was so interesting, it was such a good word, and since it made sense in the scene, might as well use that over something whose sound didn't fit as well with the story and the sentence. But that said, you want to make sure you're still choosing details that make sense and prioritize that over just the sounds, which leads into point four. Make your details mean something. Even though sometimes, especially in setting, you might choose details kind of just for the imagery, you don't want to start being too arbitrary. This is especially important when choosing details for your character. Choosing specific, interesting details can paint a very quick image and picture of the character, but because of that, you want to be very purposeful in the details you choose. Choose details that reveal what you want to reveal about the character, rather than just seeing odd for no reason, which can lead into another problem. Number five, try not to be too quirky. Sometimes when writers are trying to create lots of specificity, they get too caught up in the specificity and it gets a bit out of hand. The focus becomes just on choosing interesting details rather than on the character themselves. Details can seem strange and too quirky when they seem kind of arbitrary and random and like they're just there to be weird, but we don't have deep or full characterization to pair them with. That doesn't mean that characters can't do quirky things, weird quirks can be really interesting, but it has to fit in with what we know about the character and it has to come along with some actual character depth. A few quirky details isn't enough to really give us a feel for the character. So strange or quirky character details can work, but if the characterization is flat or the details don't make sense, it can seem like the author is just trying too hard to be quirky. Number six, think about the finer details and finer distinctions. Think about the more specific levels of categorization. A chef could just be a chef, or they could be a sushi chef, or they could own a food truck, or they could have just started their own weird underground hipster gastro pub. These are kind of the finer distinctions of categorizing what a chef character can be. Number seven, be careful not to overuse adjectives. Now, being more specific often means using more adjectives, since 
an adjective makes a noun more specific. So the quest for specificity is great, but be careful not to let it lead you down a path of too many adjectives. Because even though it's true that adjectives will make your prose more specific, they will also weaken the writing. When in doubt, always go for a more specific noun or verb, and try to choose the most specific and powerful adjectives and adverbs you can, rather than using a bunch of weaker ones. And number eight, be careful with jargon. Jargon is technical language that is specific to a field, and some writing styles or voices use it to great effect and it's part of the style. However, it's something to be wary of. Some level of jargon can help build the voice, but too much can make it very confusing. It can be difficult to read and understand, and can really impede clarity. The goal of specificity is to make the writing more vivid, so if the clarity is impacted by that, then it kind of defeats the point. So those are eight ways to create more specificity in your writing. Thank you so much for watching, and remember to subscribe for new writing, editing, and publishing videos every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time.